Hi folks, yes today is going to be a bit of a sort of gloomy one, it's going to be uh, Death or the Grim Reaper. Death has appeared in so many different books and movies and things, it's been in Monty Python, uh, Baron Munchaus and all sorts of things like that, um, but probably my favourite incarnation of Death is of course in the Terry Pratchett Discworld novels. So here we go, this is going to be Death. Enjoy. Oh, and remember to like and subscribe. Okay, so with this one, I'm going to start with a line going down, just like that. And then another one going across. And then another one, a sharp angle and back up like that. Into a faint line around the edge. And a slight line going down like that. Then this side I'll do a little line going across. And another one down like that. And I'm going to do another one going around there. Ooh. And then curve around and up that side. Now this side I'll bring a line out, around and up. And then down that side, down, across and up there. Then we're going to do a tooth mark going up and then down, up and down. A couple of jagged edges there and then do other teeth going behind like that. And then do teeth there and there as well. Now we'll do a hint of the other teeth underneath so a little tick marks like this and just join them up with little lines and then bring a line down down and then little lines going up like that once we've got that we can do another line down curve it a little wiggle and across like this and then put a couple of little texture marks in there and on those cheekbones. Now what I'm going to do is bring a line up and over and then this one go up and over like that and then put another little line going like that. Now I'm going to bring this line down and up and this one go down behind the cheekbone there and up there then we're going to bring this line down and further apart as it gets to there and then up that side then I'm going to go down this side wiggle it around and up And then bring this to a sort of point over there and bring it back to there. So the next part is I'm going to do the back of the head. So we're going to bring a line going up and over. And then put a couple of creases there. And then do a sort of jaggedy line on that slightly scruffy and then pointed finger pointed finger pointed finger and do another one slightly wide just for good measure and then a big thumb one on that side like that now do a line behind there 
and then bring this jaggedy line up and follow that jaggedy line up to there. Then I'm going to bring this down and down and then I'm going to bring another line out just round there for the back of his cuff of his cloak. Then bring another line over like that. And then crease is down that side as well. Then we do a slight peak that side as well and then bring that down to there. Continued in some more creases around the back, lots of folds to his enormous cloak, and then join that up to there. Now, what I'm going to do is do a line going across on this side, and then do a square part like that, and then do a couple of little tiny bolts and bring a line down, down and over and then another little line just away from it then another part away from there and down there and then what we can do a slight wobble a drag it a bit like that and then we're going to bring this all the way over to there then we're going to do up and then bring this one all the way over, gradually getting thinner and thinner and thinner until we go to that really distinct point there for the sharpest blade in existence. Now this side I want to bring a line over and down like that and then a small line like that and then a point up and down like that. Then bring it to there and then bring other little fingers going behind just like this. Then we bring a square part around the back to there. Then we're going to do a line going out, right in, out and across like that. Then level with that going back again, down to there, over and down. Then bring a line across and put a square part on the top, just like that. Now we're going to do a faint line going up and around there and the same again on this side I'm going to do a tiny line across I'm going to do those sands just drifting away inside this sands of time and just like that we've got this we can do the other cuff so I'm going to bring a wrist okay, down like that and then a few creases like a few jagged slightly make him look old and aged and then a shoulder on that side and then we can bring this line down here and then go down and a couple of jagged edges like this as it comes up and we're going to bring this line going down and across and then do some jagged edges on that and then we can finish off bringing this scythe down to the bottom there and some slight jaggedy lines 
down to there and then just finish it off like that. Now what we can do is bring some lines out and out and then folds coming down away from that hood. More jagged lines there and bring that down to there and then what I'm going to do is do some big swirls so bring a line around under there curve it around and then round like this and again on this side curve it right up and then you can keep doing these different lines to make it kind of finish off so sort of jaggedy parts like that going into a curve go behind there connect some together and then round like this and it just gives it this nice finished look makes them look more ancient more lines down like that. Finish that hand on there. And I'm going to curve that up around. And do more like this. You could do any pattern you really like there. Just It's just a case of big wavy lines make that a bit more sort of mystical looking. shade this, you might shade it in black, you might use black felts or black pencils. I'll be using Photoshop so you'll be able to see a lot of these lines showing through hopefully. So we're going to bring a few more in there just to, so you've got a bit of texture there when you finally shade it in. And of course with Death in the Discworld novels he has slight, a slight blue glow inside his eyes as well. But like an eternal look. It's a very sinister one this time. And then we'll do a few dots. We can aged and old. Very tiny little circles. A few more little lines there. And then the final touch is to do some faint lines to make the scythe handle look more wooden. takes just a few faint little lines just to give it a sort of a wood effect and what's quite good as well is make sure the tops on there you can add on the top as well to part of that side poking out the top with a wood effect on there like that and we'll put a few little textures on that blade once you've got all those parts you're kind of there. A couple little dots just to finish it off. A few more dusty bits floating around him. But there we have Death. 